Hello everybody and welcome to the April Dev Diary for 2024 in Prehistoric Kingdom. So we've only got a very brief Dev Diary this time around, but it does reveal our mystery new dinosaur. And it is one that I thought was highly likely, so let's begin reading. So keeping it brief, development on update 11 is going well. The logistics system is essentially complete, but pending integration with staff and more UI elements. Staff themselves are coming along with a lot of work being done on their models and animations. Although staff and logistics won't make the initial PCB release, that's public test branch, for update 11 on May 10th, we're pleased with, with how they're developing and look forward to sharing more with you soon. Okay, so it also says um, the public test branch will contain the following features, a new species, Leolnosaura, new modules, new basic backstage props that we'll get to a bit, um, improved fences and staff gates, which we'll also get into a, in a bit. Improved excavation system, improved GUI flow, and they'll be rolling out logistics and staff related gameplay to the public test branch as their development continues. In the meantime, players will have access to the new staff related modules such as the loading bay, staff sensor, and fossil depots to prepare parks and create custom prefabs. One of the other changes we've been making is to the animal nursery. Like the fossil depot, there will only be one animal nursery module per park. With the menu now accessible from the park services menu, the current module's designs will eventually be converted into props, with a new building and nursery UI revamp coming down the line. The current nursery menu will be found in the same place as excavations, research and finances. As always, the public test branch will include experimental changes and won't reflect the final update 11 release. The team will be working to add more content, polish and progressively finalise the update. This year we're aiming to utilise the public test branch more frequently so that players can check in to see what we're up to, even if it's in development. That's pretty cool. See all our animals right here. Now we're getting on to a bit of big stuff. Over the years, fences and enclosures have accumulated a lot of tech debt due to having some of the oldest code in the game. They were so old, in fact, that they actually predate the modular building system. With staff needing to access enclosures pretty soon, we had two options. Band-Aid gates onto the old code and rework fences down the line, or rework fences now, but delay update 10's public test branch to May 10th. We chose the, they chose the second option, and in a little over a week, our awesome programmers not only rebuilt the fence system from the ground up, but improved performance and added support for modular staff gates. On the technical side, these new fences are way less rigid to work with and have allowed the team to add some excellent quality of life improvements for our users. So here we get a bit of a look at some, some of the animations. So for example, when placing fences, they will now collide and snap to existing sections rather than clipping through them. The maximum segment length has been increased, making it easier to create circular habitats. There is also a new line indicator that appears once the max length is reached. If touching an existing segment, angle snap will now use its local direction, rather than defaulting to the world grid. This means that if you've been building fences at a strange angle and decide to use angle snap, the game will automatically account for it. When replacing fence designs, the preview is now real time. You can see an example below. Ignore our debug dev material. Modular staff get models can be attached to fences, updating in real time, and this is temporary game art, uh, gate art, I think, is what I was supposed to say there. These will eventually allow staff to pass into enclosures once they are included in update 11. All of this is on top of fences not only rendering faster, but taking up way less memory too. Thanks to this new infrastructure, it's going to be so much easier for us to tackle things like fence maintenance and animal breakouts in the future. These improvements have been needed for a long time and couldn't be happier to finally get it out of the way. In update 11, we're adding a bunch of backstage props as part of the basic theme. With staff coming soon, we wanted to provide a few more items to help make the, the zoo feel a lot more real. Yeah, this looks very familiar to um, what Planet Zoo added with the conservation pack and a little bit with the barnyard animal pack as well, so it's good to see Prehistoric Kingdom adding that sort of thing in as well as I think that's a really cool feature to introduce. Looking to the immediate future, everything discussed below will not be available in the initial update 11 build coming to the public test branch, but will instead be added progressively. So a new species during the update 11 public test branch, a new sauropod, new sauropod morph, I should say, will be marching its way into your parks. Please welcome the broad lizard 
Latiosaurus. Unlike its younger relatives currently featured in the game, the tri this Triassic dinosaur was bipedal, featuring short forelimbs with sharp claws. Our scientists have observed extreme size variation in adult specimens of Platyosaurus, making this species a particularly diverse bunch to look at. Platyosaurus will be released later in the Update 11 test branch. And it looks fantastic too. We actually saw this Platyosaurus way back, I think 2020? Back when the T-Rex redo was first revealed. And I can say that it has stood the test of time pretty well, and it looks fantastic. I love how this guy looks. Great to see Platyosaurus finally being added into the game. During the Update 11 public test branch, we'll be overhauling the animal nursery with a fresh design and new behaviour. Our goal is to move away from showing a general or default specimen and aim to instead display the actual individual that will be bred. This means that you'll be able to see potential mutation, size and skin variation prior to creation. Each time you create an individual, the next one will appear different. As you can see in the UI concept art below, all of the habitat stats are missing. That's because everything you need to satisfy your animals has been moved to the Paleopedia, an upcoming database that can be accessed from anywhere in the park. And since a lot of the species descriptions are currently still being written, we'll be adding them into the Paleopedia at a later date. And here's an early look at how it looks though. Yeah, it looks great. It reminds me of Plant Zoo a lot. And I'm actually really excited to see how how full this Paleopedia will be by the end of Prehistoric Kingdom's roster. I think it's going to... Well, actually, I don't know, even know if Prehistoric Kingdom's going to end its roster. Like, there's so many Prehistoric animals to choose from still. But it's going to be, look really cool. And I'm really excited to see this. And so, with that being brief, that is our April Dev Diary. Very short, but promising. So, the new fence rework... All the back, new backstage props that are going to be coming in, and of course, Platyosaurus as well. Work on the Paleopedia and Animal Nursery revamp is looking really good too. But I'm really excited for the future of this game. I think this game ha still has so much potential, and I'm really glad that we keep seeing these dev diaries. And yeah, can't wait to see progress it continue to ensue as the game keeps existing. And yeah, Platyosaurus looking fantastic. Let me know what your thoughts are of this dev diary and the work that's being done and of Platyosaurus itself down in the comments down below. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.